Welcome to PSD Tuts. I'm Steve Kaplan, and today I'm going to show you some of the really cool new 3D features in Photoshop CS6. So let's start off by getting a 3D object into our scene. And we can do this by going to the 3D menu. We could choose New 3D Layer from File. Or we could also put it in by going to the File menu and choosing Place. We're going to work with an existing 3D object. It's this model of a hand. And in this first tutorial, we'll look at how to manipulate this object, how to move it around in space, and how to view it from different angles. So let's go ahead and place this. And there it is in the scene. Now, in order to move it, we need the 3D Move tool. Ah, but wait, there is no 3D Move tool. That's right, in CS6, we use the regular Move tool to move our object around. So let's switch to it now. Now, right away, when we click on the Move tool, we can see a few things have happened in our workspace. First of all, this ground plane has appeared, and that shows us the basis, the ground on which all 3D models are resting, and from which they take their reference. We can also see up in the corner this secondary view, and that's very useful. That enables us to view the same object from two angles simultaneously. So it's very handy, for example, if we're looking at this, we're thinking, well, is that finger resting exactly on the ground, or is it floating above it? Up here, we can change this to view it from the front. And now we can see, yes, it is resting exactly on that ground plane. We can view this from the top, from either side, from a, a default camera view, which is the same as we're looking at here, whatever we like. And one of the cool things is, by pressing this button, we can swap the main view and the second review over. Now, before we start to manipulate this object, let's look at our basic setup. This is the way that I like to work in Photoshop with my swatches panel at the top and my layers panel beneath. When we're working in 3D, well, I'm not going to leave the swatches for one thing, and I'm not going to leave the layers panel so much. So instead, let's switch to the 3D layout. Now, all this does is it presents a different configuration of our panels. So now we have the 3D panel at the top, and that's quite different from how it was in CS5, and we have the new properties panel at the bottom. And you'll find that all the 3D functionality is split between these two panels. So let's have a look at how we can move this hand around. Well, all we need to do to change our viewpoint is to click and drag in the background. Now, as we move this, you can see that what we're doing is moving the camera view. We're not moving the object itself relative to that ground plane. So if we click on the ground plane and drag it, we're moving the camera. If we want to see how much we're moving the camera, well, in the properties panel, we can go onto our coordinates view, and that shows exactly the change that we've made. And if we click and drag, you can see how these numbers change. And if you want, you can enter the numbers in here by hand if you want a particular kind of view. But let's go for a more or less front-on view like this. To actually manipulate the object within the scene, rather than the scene itself, we click on it. And you can see that this bounding box appears. And in the middle of the bounding box, you can see the familiar 3D controller. And we had this in Photoshop CS5 and indeed in CS4 before that. And just a reminder on how this works, there's one handle here for each axis. On each of these, we can press and drag on the icon on the end to move it along. We can go on the next one down to rotate it around that axis. Let me undo that. And we can go on the next icon down to scale it again and just along that axis. And let me undo that. And as before, we can go right in the center and drag to scale uniformly to so make the whole object larger and smaller. And you can see, as we make any of these changes, it's the object itself that's moving and not the scene. Now, this was a great way of working. It certainly made working in 3D much more intuitive than it had been before. But there is a problem. 
Now let's say we want to drag our object back and forth along the y-axis or to rotate it. Well, that's actually quite tricky. We can see the controls in there, but they're really quite hard to hit because we're viewing it directly from the other side. In CS6, there's a whole new way of working with manipulating 3D objects, and that is all to do with this bounding box. As we move over each face of the bounding box, we can see this little pop-up description of what's going to happen when we click and drag. So on the front face, it says move on the y-axis, and as we drag on this face, we can see, OK, that's good. This is now going back and forth only in that y-axis. And that's really cool, very, very useful thing to be able to do. If we go on the top face and we now drag, well, that is moving it up and down on the z-axis. And you can see it is just that axis that it's moving along. If we move close to one of the edges of the bounding box, we can now rotate our object. So it behaves exactly as you'd expect when you move next to a vertical edge. Well, as you think, we would rotate around the z-axis. And we can just grab this and turn it around in space. Now, as we do so, you can see that the pop-up help here is showing exactly the angle to which we're rotating it. And this happens as we drag. It doesn't matter if we drag close to it or far away, we can still rotate it, because I've clicked and I've dragged over that vertical edge. Similarly, if we go over this horizontal edge, well, we can now rotate it around the x-axis. And by going over this one, going to the distance, well, we can rotate it as we'd expect around the y-axis. Now that we can see the side plane, we can drag this to move it along the x-axis as well. Before, we couldn't get to that when we were viewing it head-on. So when we position this over one of the vertical edges, well, we can move it around just on this plane. In other words, it's moving it in two axes simultaneously. So three ways to manipulate the object. We can drag on a face to move just in that one axis. We can drag near an edge to rotate around that axis. Or we can drag on an edge to move in that plane. A far more intuitive way of working. Much, much easier. Now, you may find when you're looking at all of this that, well, all this stuff is kind of getting in the way. You don't like to see the, uh, the ground plane all the time. You don't want to see uh, the secondary view. And there's a couple of ways of dealing with this. We can either simply switch tool. And if we go to any tool except the Move tool, everything else disappears. Another way would be to switch layer. So if we view our Layers panel, here it is. If we switch from that layer we were on to the background layer, well, all the ground plane disappears. We only see the ground plane in the secondary view when we're on a 3D layer. In fact, if we're going to want to switch to our Layers panel frequently, we can pick it up and let's drag that in next to our Properties panel. And now we can switch between them quite easily. If, like many users, you found all this background stuff distracting, well, you can get rid of it entirely. The secondary view you can get rid of by either clicking the little close box in the corner or by going to the View menu and choosing show 3D secondary view. And when that's unchecked, it'll disappear. Also in the view menu, you can choose not to show the 3D ground plane. But let's turn that on again for the time being. One thing we haven't looked at yet is the lighting. And you can see at the moment there's a shadow cast directly downwards from this hand onto the ground plane. We can adjust that shadow by clicking the little light icon up at the top.
click on it once and you can see what we see in the middle here is a ball with a stick sticking out of it. We can grab that stick and move it around. And as we move it, we are adjusting the position of this light and so the position of the shadow on the ground plane underneath it. And that's why the ground plane is so important. It's there to catch shadows so we can make our objects look as if they're actually sitting on the ground. This is very intuitive. It's very easy to move this around. And we can position our light wherever we want it. There's a lot we can do with the shadows. As we're looking at them here, we can see there's a very hard shadow. If we go to the Properties panel, the light will automatically be selected because we're working on the lights, and we can soften this shadow. We can do so by dragging the slider, and what happens in this preview mode is we can see the shadow is shown as tiny dots, and that's because that's a very quick way for it to render. So as we drag the lighting to a different position, it's very easy for Photoshop to render this shadow in a different way. If we want to see how this actually looks, we have to render the scene. And the way we do that is to go to the 3D menu and choose Render. And it goes through the scene making numerous passes. On each pass, it refines the view and it makes it that little bit more sharp, that little bit more clear. Also, on each pass, it's going to take longer to render each section as it goes through. And you can see this is going to take some time. It's getting partway through the image and it reckons it's got 96% of the render still to go. And you can see that down at the bottom here. That's going to take quite a while to render this entire scene. There is a simple solution. If we click anywhere, we stop the render. What we can do is change from the Move tool to one of the Selection tools. And let's draw a marquee. And we can choose to render just this marquee. So let's say we're particularly interested in this finger and how that works with the shadow underneath it. And let's zoom in a little bit so we can see that bit more clearly. When we now go to 3D and render, what we're going to do is to render just this selection. And you can see it's doing it very, very much more quickly. There's 88% left, now 82% left, 77% left. So it's racing through this. Rather than having to render the entire scene that we're looking at, it's rendering just this very small selection. And because we're working on a small selection, it can render very, very quickly compared with having to render the entire scene. So it's now saying there's a very small amount of time left, 9%, 6%, and here we go, there is the scene fully rendered. You can see the smooth edges on the side of the fingers, and you can see the very, very smooth shadow that's being created. We can press Command-H again, or Control-H on a PC to hide those edges. In fact, we could even deselect. That piece will stay rendered until we do something such as moving an object in the scene and then we'll lose the render and we're going to have to start again. Let's take a final look at how these panels work. The 3D panel is divided into several sections. At the top, the first button shows all the scene elements and we can see here we have the environment, the scene, the current camera view and the body, which in this case is a hand. We can look at the mesh, and the only mesh visible is the body here. We can also look at the materials used by going onto the third icon, and that shows us the material used for the nails and for the skin. And now the properties panel at the bottom has changed to show the colors used and we can scroll down here to see the amount of the bump map, the refraction, the opacity, and so on. Finally, there's the lighting tab, and that shows all the lights in our scene. So the 3D panel 
and the properties panel work in tandem with each other. As we change each view in the 3D panel, we can see the accompanying property panel changes to match it. And remember, the properties panel will always give you feedback information about the state of your object. So let's go to the view menu and show our extras again, which we hid earlier to hide that selection area. Now, when we click on our hand, we get the bounding box showing once more. And remember that as we drag and we move our object around, we can always go to the Properties panel. If we click on the Scene menu and go to the Coordinates, and we can see where our object is in the scene. And as we move it, we can see how the coordinates change. So we've seen a whole new way of working with our objects, which is to manipulate its position in space by dragging directly on this bounding box. There are still some operations that are better done using the 3D axis controller, the most significant being scaling an object, which we can do most easily by dragging on the controller in the center there. And there is a basic introduction to how we manipulate, how we work with a 3D object in Photoshop CS6. In future tutorials, we'll look at how to create objects, and that's where the real fun comes in.